The Earthshifter by La Darain, a visionary fantasy thriller. Excerpt from Chapter 2, read by the author. Lake Baikal, Siberia, Russia. Sasha Elfimova could hardly be called a normal teenager. She always preferred the serene majesty of Lake Baikal in southeastern Siberia to the hustle and bustle of Moscow. What's more, she had powers, incomprehensible and scary powers. She was a time and mind shifter. Yet, even her mentor, the famous Siberian shaman Tengiz, didn't know how far her powers would develop when the time came. Sasha dipped her hand in the crystal clear waters of Lake Baikal, now gleaming seductively in the light of the full moon, and smiled at, uh, smiled at her companions, the old shaman Tengiz and her father, the Moscow University professor of linguistics, Maxim Elfimov. They were camping out near the lake shore, in their secret spot, just an eight-kilometer hike from Polyanko, Tengiz's native village. Earlier today, after some hiking in Taiga, they performed a shamanic ritual at Tengiz's sacred site, called the Shaman Rock. After that, as golden rays of the warm summer sun started giving way to the coolness of the silvery moon, they decided to camp out in the Bay of Seals, on Baikal's majestic shore. The seals enjoyed sunning on the gleaming rocks that wrapped the hidden bay. Sasha had just finished having a chat with her favorite local inhabitant, Philia the seal. Good catch today, Philia informed her telepathically, longerously exposing his shiny wet body to the sun's fading rays. You've got to dive very deep into the sea to get the best fish. If you want, Sasha, I can bring you some next time, he offered, looking at her adoringly uh, with that cute cat-like face of his. At the last ray of the waning sun pierced the water, Philia dove back into the lake, undoubtedly to find a nice, cozy spot in which to slumber. Sasha T. Tengiz offered her a steamy cup, which she accepted gratefully. There was nothing better than Dedushka Tengiz's green tea after a day of hiking in Taiga. She stretched her legs in front of the fire and savored it slowly. So quiet, Maxim broke the silence. Beats the city every time. It's another world, Sasha echoed, peaceful. Just as he, she finished her sentence, she noticed two gleaming yellow eyes staring straight at her from the darkness of the trees. Dedushka Tengiz, she whispered. Look! Tengiz slowly turned his head in the direction of the gleaming eyes as Sasha gave a slight gasp. More and more eyes were appearing in the surrounding darkness and now at least ten pairs stared at them from various corners. Wolves! mouthed Maxim. Sasha, get behind me! Maxim started getting slowly to his feet while at the same time reaching for his hiking stick. Sasha, behind me, now! No, Papa, Sasha shook her head. You won't achieve anything with your stick against ten wolves. Let me talk to them. She started getting to her feet, too. No, Sasha, no. These are wolves, not seals. Maxim made the quick move in her direction, as if trying to shield her, and that caused the wolves to growl. Papa, don't. You're provoking them. Oh, sit down and be quiet, you two, said Tengiz finally, in an uncharacteristically sharp voice, carefully setting down his smoking pipe on a nearby rock. I will handle this. Tengiz rarely, if ever, got this way, which meant that he was serious. Sasha obediently sat down on the ground, and as she did, her nostrils were suddenly overpowered by the foul stench of a large, sweaty animal that appeared out of nowhere next to her. She turned her head to the right and saw a huge brown bear right where Tengiz just sat a moment ago. The bear's fur was shaggy and he got up to his feet, towering and blocking the moon. Oh my God, yelled Maxim, jumping back uh, to his feet. He threw himself on top of Sasha, attempting to protect her with his own body. Sasha struggled to free herself. Papa, it's okay. It's not what you think. Let me go, please. Sasha, be quiet, whispered Maxim frantically. I will protect you. You don't need to, Papa. Just watch. Meanwhile, the bear didn't even look at the two struggling humans next to him and made a deliberate beeline for the wolf pack. After taking several steps in the direction of the taiga, he again got up on his hind paws, his menacing claws uh, 
shining in the light of the moon. Then the bear opened his mouth, his growl rocking the forest. One of the wolves issued a squeal and started banging up. The others reluctantly followed. The bear took a few more steps in the wolf's direction and opened his mouth again. A growl, even louder than the first one, broke the stillness of the taiga. Two of the wolves deserted the field in a hurry. The rest backed up some more. Then the bear stood all the way up on his hind paws, his giant front claws outstretched, and the third growl rocked the land. It sounded like the final warning. The wolves decided not to argue. The rest of the pack turned around and ran for their lives from this strange and dangerous beast that appeared out of nowhere and for some reason wanted to protect the humans. The giant bear issued one more growl, evidently to reaffirm his victory. After that, he turned to face Sasha and Maxim and smiled. His huge body started shrinking until it was the same height as the tiny Tengiz. A moment later, the bear was gone and a shaman was standing next to them, brushing the dust and animal hairs off his clothes. Still smell a little like the bear, Tengiz noted, chuckling. Can't be helped. Residual effect. But no matter. It'll air out by the time we reach the village.